massive news in the fantasy baseball world. Plus, it's our annual best ball special. Mike Alexander from Rasball coming up next on the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Rotowire. Jeff Erickson here. I am with Mike Alexander from Rasball. You can follow Mike on Twitter at Roto underscore Juan W A N. Uh, Mike, as always, welcome to the show. How you doing? Thanks for having me on every year, Jeff. Appreciate talking best ball with you. You bet. You bet. I always love doing this. Let's jump right to with the news. Uh, during last night's Rotowire State uh, Staff League uh, 18 team auction staff keeper league, we were in the reserve rounds, and the news comes down that Devin Williams. Not only did he visit a spine specialist, he's got two fractured uh, two fractures in his back. He is going to be out at least three months. Huge news. Yeah, not not great for early drafters. He was obviously one of the top relievers taken, so you're you're scrambling for saves uh, if you're able to, and if not, then you're <laughs> you're probably just not going to compete in that category. Exactly, exactly. Um, and you know, you start off with. Uh, you know, and the thing is, at least there are saves that come into the league, including his replacements. You know, Joel Piamps, uh, Abner Uribe are, are not always drafted in leagues. There's there's many leagues, those early drafts where he is undrafted, especially if you're in a 12 team format, 15 team format, draft champions leagues. Well, draft champions leagues, you're not picking them up anyhow, because there are no pickups. It's a draft and hold. That's what we do. But in uh, any any other managed leagues, there's a good chance those two guys will be available. Do you have a preference between the two? Not really. The, the sound coming out of that uh, organization is probably it's going to be a little bit of a committee. Um, I think the sound bite I heard was that they're going to pass a fireman's hat around. <laughs> um, so, you know, you're you're probably taking a guess and you can't get enough information to know beforehand whether you're going to be on the right track. So exactly. Don't overspend. Throw a dart. If you luck into one of them for, for a low bid, see what happens. I, I like that. I just looked up and saw Piamps is on one of my uh, DCs, so I was pretty happy about that. A little, he little, seems like the favorite, but uh, yeah, yeah. At least he'll get a chance. You know, he'll he'll, he'll get some sort of chance there. So that's nice. Uh, let's. Uh, the other huge news is obviously Garrett Cole. You know, the fact that we know he's now going to miss a month or two. This is pretty big deal. This is a big deal. Major blow for fantasy players for the real life Yankees. That that, uh, that rotation was already. Not not the most robust. So, um, you know, again, people drafting early took a hit here. Uh -huh. uh, and a lot of best ball formats do have those early studs right. kind of get premium. So, um, you know, especially on a site like Fantrax, I've, I've got my, my share of Garrett Cole. And uh, that's going to be a blow to overcome because they're saying one to two months isn't, you know, it, he's not – completely ruled out of the box, but that's one to two months. And then we'll see not one to two months. He's guaranteed back. So yeah, that's right. Three months. It could be, he pitches 20 innings this year. You never know. Yeah. Um, so I, I've seen like drafts where he's now going 17th, 18th round. I feel like that's where I might, I, I might even go a little earlier than that, but I need to have, it has to be starting with three digits now before I'd even consider taking Garrett Cole. Certainly. Yeah. He's, he's, all but removed from most boards and you know the deep formats when you're taking a guy that's not really going to contribute anyway okay yeah that that's fine but um pitching pitching's real thin this year and it gets thinner as we get further into spring training yeah it is it is um so we'll watch that and you know it's interesting to see what happens the rest of the drafting pool uh like do you start, some people go commit to hit or hit or hit or to start and they're they're contest leagues where you need pitching you can't just punt it um right. do they more commit to that or do they push up zach wheeler i was talking to james anderson on the uh, sirius xm show today and he he got uh wheeler in the second round and he, he was kind of surprised thought he'd be gone so he was actually pretty happy uh to get him there but others might really fully commit to going three hitters to start bully that hitting and then get you know, go volume on pitching later i know a lot of people like to do that yeah i think you'll also see some of those kind of fringe tier one guys like George Kirby, uh, Yamamoto, depending on what, what format you're on, get pushed up kind of further mm -hmm. into that tier. I would say the other lesson here too, is if like you're a best ball player, uh, a frequent best ball player, it, you're, you know, 
it, pitching is a volume play and you want to have some diversification. You don't want to be stuck on the same aces. You want to have a smattering of them. So you don't get too much exposure to one, especially I think at the high end where, I mean, they're all going to be drafted. If you've got your sleeper late and he falters, well, okay, fine. But when you have that, you don't want to have too much exposure to the same ace. Certainly. And sites like underdog have some nice features built in where you can look at your exposure and see, okay, you know, um, I'm 30, 40% on this guy because he was at a price I was very happy about. Um, right. You know, it, it worked in a stack I get often, you know, like a lot of my, if I can get Acuna, I'm probably looking for some affordable Braves like Jared Kalenic. And, you know, we got a little more news there that uh, Adam Duvall's coming to town and there could be some platoon implications. So, um, like that kind of hurts for your, your Kalenic uh, shares. Well, let's talk about that real quick because, yeah, you know, it looks like, I saw a comment in the uh, the, the the chat. Uh, PJ was saying, "Look like the Braves just realized they they they're about to start Jared Kelnick every day, and uh, <laughs> don't think that that's ideal, uh, especially against lefties. And you know, he goes through a lot of slumps. You know, he 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 loses versus uh, you know tr- uh, you know inanimate objects at times too, and you know breaks his toe and things like that, that nature also. Uh, but you know, Kelnick uh, loses time, and Duvall has certainly had a lot of success in Atlanta." That ballpark plays really well for him. We yeah. could see him working his way into a, a little bit decent amount of playing time. Certainly. And don't forget, he can play center field. So Michael Harris uh, might get a day off here and there, too. Yeah, that's true. That, that is absolutely true about that there. So the funny thing is I had just downgraded uh, Duval's playing time because he had remained unsigned. This is a this is a good landing, a super good landing spot for him. I still think it was right to downgrade his playing time. He is in a, he is going to be in a timeshare. He is not going to be playing full time. So yeah. uh, I think that that still remains to be the case. Uh, Yuri Perez left yesterday's start after like 15 pitches, 14 pitches, something like that uh, with finger issues. He's been dealing with a recurrence of a broken nail on, on that. This is kind of disturbing because this is a the type of time in spring where starting pitchers are trying to get their pitches in. They're trying to get their build that length. Yeah, fourteen pitches. He was hoping to get in the seventies. Not great. Yeah, I mean, as far as pitcher injury goes, fingernails not like disaster, but it's one of those things that really lingers for guys because you're you're using right. them in most of your pitches and and you're putting a lot of stress onto onto the tips of your fingers. Um, it just takes a while for a fingernail to grow back. You know, they do different things trying to secure it, little mm-hmm. tricks. But you know, until you got a solid fingernail back, it's just a waiting game. Right, and that could lead to blisters, as we yeah. all know. The Rich Hill Super Blister existed, um, and you know, it may change how you throw a certain breaking pitch or prevent you from t- throwing that pitch altogether. And if that takes away from your arsenal, that's no good. Now, I don't think it affects him too much for the season because he's probably not breaking 150 innings anyway. True. Uh, you know, but not what you want to see for a young guy and somebody you were probably paying a premium for. I love how now like 170 is the new 200. What's the new 150? Like 120? Um, yeah, 120, 130. You're that's like okay, that's my my solid SP3. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Ronald Acuna is going to start playing in spring training games. Uh, good news there. That was a huge scare. You might get those. This is why you don't draft Ronald Acuna 1.1 tweets out there. No, you don't get that. Uh, he's gonna looks like he's b- good to go again. At least uh, some po- so, some positive news out there in this sea of bad news. Right. You know, not not uh, not any real structural damage. He's he's ready to go. It sounds like just one of those things that people with knee problems have knee problems. It's not news. You're you're living with that the rest of your life. You know, that that's the thing that's scary though is that this could this is going to happen again he's going to have more irritation at meniscus yeah. does that mean he runs less frequently i mean that's something you got to ask it's something you got to worry about definitely you know you're if you're hoping to get 70 stolen bases out of him you might not uh, be in an accurate ballpark there yeah that's right that's right so i i've only seen like a couple of token leagues where he doesn't go 1.1 if you had like, I, I well, you're a volume player in best ball. Do you, if you got like a certain number of ones, one point ones, are you going to diversify your one point one, or are you always taking Acuna? Not really, and and this is kind of both an NFL and an MLB philosophical question because you're really not going to get the opportunity to draft that guy anywhere but one point one. You know, CMC, right. Acuna, you have to take him first when you get that opportunity. You get that fortune. You just go ahead auto draft and 
you know, mm-hmm. you'll get the guys you like at two and three, and that's where you get a little bit more of a mixture. Um, but you know, the, the odds, the, the randomizer, sometimes it's friendly and sometimes it's not, you might be stuck in picks nine right. and 10 and you just can't get out of that rut. Uh, so when you, when you get graced with a one oh one, do don't, don't overthink it in best ball. I, I agree. I agree. That's going to lead us to talking about best ball. I want to really want to focus. This is a best ball focused podcast, uh, not a managed league one. Before we do that, uh, we're going to share a note with our good friends. Uh, let's start off with Rival Fantasy. Uh, it's official fantasy baseball season, and the time for MLB best ball is on Rival Fantasy. That's right. Rival Fantasy now has best ball. Full season lobbies are live now until opening day with both fast and slow drafts. Then we weekly and daily drafts will be available from opening day through the end of the World Series. That's right. You can do in-season best ball drafts there. Best ball is all the fun of the draft without the season-long management. Enter a league, draft your squad, and the app does the rest. No need to set your lineup or make waiver moves. The highest scores at the end of the regular season will be the winners. Invite your friends and start drafting for the 2024 fantasy baseball season today. Sign up at joinrival.com slash rotowire for our $200 deposit match and $25 in free entries. Welcome to the future of fantasy sports. Welcome to Rival Fantasy. All right, I'm here with uh, Mike Alexander from Razzball. Every year, Mike and I talk about best ball leagues. For the uninitiated, Mike, let's uh, talk about just the whole concept of best ball, why it's growing so much in our space. So the, the joy of it is that it's a set it, forget it, system you're going to draft a team and you don't have to look at it <laughs> hopefully until you either win a little money or you don't mm-hmm. uh, the, the system will select your best players for the week start them in your roster and you go from there uh, the overall contests are fairly popular like on underdog um, nfbc uh, with their with their um they have both best ball as well as a cut line product with it's got a couple fabs right uh, you know, DraftKings is throwing their hat into the arena with with uh, you know a big overall contest. So um, it has playoff weeks in the end, you know, towards the end of the season. But uh, you know, it, it's really great for tuning up ADP, getting your feel for the player pool. You do have to be a little bit more aware in in baseball than you do in football uh, about the the unique settings because you know, especially underdog with, with the roster construction of just three outfielders and three infielders, outfielders get pushed way, way up. Yep. Um, that's right. That's so, you, right. you know, you're, you're not going to get the round feel, but you'll get a feel for how the, the outfielders are going to go a little bit. So you, in, yeah, instead of like overall ADP, you need to know within position ADP sometimes. You know? Right. And, and, you know, there's, there's some kind of rogues in there because plate appearances can, can really matter on, mm-hmm. on that yeah. scoring. So, um, you know, some, some guys projected for the leadoff spot, uh, you know, might be a name you're not expecting to see around pick 100, but, uh, um, you know, uh, San Francisco's new leadoff man, um, Jung Hu Lee. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, know, that's a good name. He's in the early one hundreds. So, you know, one Oh six point nine right now on underdog. That's, that's not a spot you'd expect to see him if you were a classic Roto player. Right. Well, I, I, Hey, know your format. Super important there. And, uh, that's what we're going to try to do here. So let's start. Let's talk underdog first. Uh, you, you alluded to it there. Three outfielders, only four infielders, right? Or three infielders, right? Three, three and three, which yeah. I wish it were four infielders. I feel like that would balance the problem, if you consider it a problem, of how fast outfielders go. You know, you're when you're looking at ADP, the top 10 players are all outfielders. Right. Freeman is your first guy at 11 um, that's not an outfielder. And... You know, if you don't have three or four outfielders by the time you get to to round it eight or nine, you're in trouble. You're you're looking at some names that you're not going to be very thrilled to draft. Yeah, and that's that's so it that is arresting, and it's it's one of those things you kind of have to get used to. There, like, oh yeah, Bobby Witt's not a top three player, like, well, not a top five player. What are we doing here? Um, yeah, that, that that's got to be one of those things that kind of catches your eye right away. I actually wish it would be. I, I, I'm old. See, I'm old. I'm not even old school. I'm just old, Mike. Um, but I want one from every position. We should have like a catcher. You should have a first baseman, a second baseman, a third baseman, yeah. and a shortstop. That's the way I feel like it should be. But I like that. That, that uh, RT Sports platform is like that. Um, yeah. You know, you, you just get the positions, and it's a, it's a true lineup. It, right. It feels like a nice balance. But you know, the the reason Underdog and DraftKings are, are using this format is they want it to be a quick and easy draft. 
Right. They want it to be accessible. It's points for that reason. It's outfield infield split for that reason. They want you to be able to pop on your phone, you know, when you're falling asleep at night, knock out a draft really quick. And yeah. the, the leagues fill in minutes, if not seconds. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's come a long way from five, six years ago when best ball was just starting to break into MLB. Right. Right. It's been bigger in football, obviously, but it's, it's really picking up in baseball. Uh, annual tradition for us is on the, you know, myself, Scott Jenstad, uh, Vlad Sedler and Tim Schuler. We drive to Vegas for the NFBC next week on the drive, like not Scott, cause he's driving, but the rest of us hop on the underdog and dra- do a couple of drafts before we hit that Nevada border. Um, and you know, Scott hand your phone over and, and draft as many A's as you can for him. Yeah, there you go. Our A's. No, no longer our A's anymore. It's just the A's. Yeah. Um, it might not even be that someday, uh, but uh, it's definitely not Scott's A's anymore. Uh, but yeah, uh, scoring wise, let's talk about underdogs. Uh, sc- you know, we, we talked about the uniqueness in pushing up outfielders. What do we need to know about the scoring format in underdog? Yeah, so it's, it's points. It's pretty trimmed down. Um, singles, doubles, triples, home runs are progressively more points. RBIs, runs, and stolen bases also score. Um, pitching's pretty simplistic. You got wins and quality starts count. Mm-hmm. For, for most of your pitching points, strikeouts and innings pitched are, are worth one point each. So you do want guys that are going to go deep into games. Um, with pitching, it's all about two start weeks when it comes to best ball. Okay. A, a guy that can give you two starts, you know, 10, 12 innings, 10, 12 strikeouts, maybe more, and get a win quality start somewhere in there is just has so much of a higher potential than a guy with one start, even if it's a great start. So. Um, are closers uh, thus discounted a little bit there because of that? or uh, Closers are not going to be drafted on underdog DraftKings because saves aren't worth anything. Saves aren't worth anything. Oh, yeah. Not, not on these platforms, you know, on RT Sports, NFBC, you do get points for saves. So the closers do have some some later value. So there's uh, zero value in closers. Yeah, zero value. You won't be drafting relievers uh, at all. The, you know, you, you need six pitchers generally. You got a 20 man roster. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, six, seven, seven is the typical breakdown. You're not varying very far from that. You might go seven pitchers and six infielders because you feel pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the infield pool is because there's more infielders that you're going to draft pretty good infield. Um, you know, you might feel OK getting away with six. Um, there's a small argument to be made. If you get the right pitching staff, you could go five pitchers. Um, you know, the, the real the real implications coming in at the end of the season when you're going into the playoffs, you need to advance. You know, you're, you're trying to win your individual league, that pod, and then you're going to advance into a pod with winners. Okay. You have fairly similar lineups. You know, you really are just hoping for some good hitting and some two-star pitching. Um, you know, it, it may not matter that you have Spencer Strider if you're facing people who got three pitchers with two starts. That, that's kind of the, the tough part with pitching and, and why it's not as early um, for the for the starting the top aces. You know, you're you're not going to get them in round one hardly ever. Um, you know, so you, you get a little bit of a discount on the early guys and then it starts to go. Then you, okay. you know, now we need to start grabbing guys that are going to be the, the SP ones and SP twos in their rotation and get that two start shot as, as much as possible. So Uncle Ted, you may, I don't know if you are familiar with our podcast. He, he, he always is uh, very active in our podcast and he, he's not sure of opinions. Uh, he's got a good one here. He says, go 10 starters and go five and five. Otherwise bats first and then just load arms. What do you say about that extreme strategy? The hitters you're going to be left with, it's going to be an uphill battle. But the thing about these, no, he wants to go load up the bats first. And then, uh, just- yeah, the, again, that, you know, that, that can work too. If you, if you land with, with solid starters, um, mm-hmm. That's hard to pre- predict guys that are going to be reliable for the full year. Okay. Um, especially right now, you know, you, you get these guys, uh, his arm hurts a little bit, but he'll be back soon. Okay. Now we're in April. He still doesn't feel great. Now May is here and all of a sudden we're considering surgery. Okay. But, all right. You know, uh, Nick Lodolo, you know, he's, is he going to be great? Is he going to strike out 200 guys? Is he going to only pitch 60 innings? We don't know. Um, so it's it's certainly you know there there's a wide open sandbox right now because it, the product hasn't been a lot around that long, right? Um, you know, we've got some data on it. Um, 
Chris and, and, and Matthew over uh, Dark Sheep and at Baseball, they they do a lot of nice stuff with data on Underdog. And, okay. You know, they'll look at advance rates, and, and that's kind of what you want to base your, your strategy on. Am I going to advance into the playoffs? Am I going to advance each week? Um, they'll look at positional breakdown. You know, how, how, what was the advance rate for 6-7-7 or 7-6-7? Seven, seven. Um, but the thing about that is, you know, nobody's trying – five and five and 10, you know, or, or I guess 10, five, five, 10 pitchers uh, in the back end, or very few people are trying it. So you don't have a data set for that. Um, you know, maybe that is the the, <laughs> the key to advancing and you right. just have to put some volume behind it. So um, I think it, it's it, always it, important to know like what percentage of the uh, prize pool is dedicated towards the overall versus your league too. And then are there strategies that work better for your league than they do for the overall? Because we do that in the NFBC all the time. Do we do that yeah. here in best ball too? Yeah, you're you're not trying to win your 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 league and not advance in the playoffs. You might break even. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's but it's is kinda... is there even a strategy that lends itself to one versus the other? Is the other question though? Uh, what strategy versus which? Well, like because like so, and you know the the parallel of the NFBC is okay. You can punt saves. You can do that and win your league, but you yeah. have no chance the overall. But in a in a points contest, in a best ball contest, is there even such a thing? I mean, you, you're, you know, I, I I guess it's like all strategies kind of play out the same. You would think for the overall versus the individual league. Right. I would say the underdog and DraftKings version of that is draining the starter market. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you got all these big name starters, maybe you can hurt enough people that you got better odds to win. But it's, you know, it's not a. a you're taking on a, a lot more risk than it's worth just to win the league and break even. Right. Keep the twenty dollars in your pocket or the ten dollars in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that exactly. That, that's kind of how I feel as well. Uh, you mentioned DraftKings is a new player into this market, um, and they have a similar format to Underdog. Very similar. Uh, scoring tweaks a little, like a double's worth one less point, but a stolen base is worth an additional point. They're, they're mimicking their their DFS scoring mainly. Um, mm -hmm. They go a little bit deeper on the pitching where um, hits and walks are going to count as negatives in addition to, to earn runs. Um, they give a complete game and a shutout boost and a no hitter boost if you get that that rare occurrence. But um, on the whole, it's it's the same thing. You're, you're starting three, three and three uh, outfielder, infielder, pitcher. Um, your bench is the same size. You just, you know, it's a 20 round draft. Um, so it's really all about structure. Right. spreading out your risk a little bit um and and the big thing on these platforms and, and any best ball platform with an overall is stacking you you have to have a, a little bit of stacking at the very yeah. least and you know drafting you know you're, if you're if you've got 14 hitters and you only have a couple of them stacked you know you're you're not um you, you're not chasing the overall you, you okay. really need to to have some of that the core of that lineup and that's tricky because the best hitters are going in the first round you know these guys that are hitting two and three and by the time you get around to being able to stack you're looking at five and six and number seven hitters so i was just gonna say no one's getting freddie freeman and mookie betts and shohei yeah. otani uh, none of them are getting they're, they're all getting one of them mm -hmm. right and you know same you know good i mean we don't you used to be able to stack Rockies, but yeah, no, can't do that anymore. But uh, at least not now. I mean, you can take a couple of them, but uh, I guess you could do a Nolan Jones, Ezekiel Tovar combo at some <laughs> point in time if you really wanted to. But yeah, I mean, you can get all the Pirates you want. You can get all the A's you want. Yeah, there, yeah. there's teams out there. Um, there are certainly first round picks that I like better for getting an additional supporting piece. Yankees are kind of easy to do that with, you mm -hmm. know, Rizzo. Um, you know, the, some of the other parts of that team, you can get much later. Mm -hmm. um, Arizona is doable with, with, you get Corbin Carroll. Um, Acuna can be kind of tricky, but Albies is out there. You know, you're not getting the three, four hitters, but um, sometimes you're projecting a little bit. Um, yeah. Olsen doesn't make it back. I take it even yeah, with the Olsen and Riley are are beginning of the second round. So you're yeah. you got zero shot. Yeah. That's what I kind of figured. Yeah. Um, and that's even with pushing a premium on outfielders, they still don't make it back, but, uh, it just shows yeah. how hitter heavy these things are. Yeah. And, no one ever power plays up. So, you know, the, right. the, even infielders that, that have that 40 homer potential, they're, they're going quick. Yeah. I can only imagine. 
could you I guess you could get Lindor and Alonzo maybe, but then you're starting two infielders among your first three picks. Yeah, it can happen, but that's tricky. You, you know, usually I'm dedicating my late picks for that that kind of stuff. If I get Alonzo, Starling Marte is a guy that I might take with second to last pick um, just because it's it's super cheap. Yep. Justice Smith says he has Machado and Tatis stack. That seems attainable. Yeah, that's attainable. You know, so you can certainly get it done. Usually right. I'm trying to have a main stack. You know, uh, maybe it's Phillies, maybe it's Braves. Trying to get three or four at least. And then right. you're kind of pairing people up. Okay, I got I got a two hitter. I got to make sure I get a four or a five. Or I have a three hitter. I got to get the five or the six. Yeah. Um, it, it's tricky. You, you really have to ignore ADP to get it done. Um mm-hmm. And that really feels unnatural for a lot of people coming from, especially Roto. Um, but you you have to do it if you want to compete in the overall. You're you're same reason you stack in DFS. You want to win the big contest. You got to stack. Right, right. So there you go. Stacking very important. Now, how how many would you want to get when you're trying to stack? How many players do you think? Uh, three is that is that good? You do you want to go? Do you want to go more than three? Or is three is about as much as you want to? Three get? or four. Yeah, three or four feels comfortable. You know, it's not a huge roster at 20. So if you go five, you're really committing to that offense. Mm-hmm. And at that point, who are you drafting? You know, right. uh, it's, you're, you're not getting the one through five on a good offense. So yeah, uh, that that's probably not that attainable. Right. And there's only like two offenses that you are really worth chasing down below five. So uh, yeah, I, I think that makes, I think you're making all the sense in the world about that. And, and you, you know, you, you definitely can do it. Um, towards the, the middle half to of certain lineups, um, you know, Dodgers, th- there's plenty of guys there that are late enough. Um, the Reds and, and the Rockies right. are always nice little mini stacks just from the environment that they're going to play their home games in, you know, like, like you mentioned with, with Tovar, um, Chris Bryant's very affordable, um, guys that are falling in, in the, the later rounds. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I'm, I'm now, now you got me thinking about a red stack cause you got a great ballpark there. You're gonna have to take Ellie early if you want him. Um, but do you? Because where's he gonna hit in that lineup? Well, that's just the question. You know, I mean, it, it, if you really want Ellie, you're thinking he's gonna move up. I mean, that's the that's the idea of it, right? Yeah. But if you um, missed out on Ellie, I'm still happy grabbing three or three or so Reds. I love Mc. Uh, you know, I love in CES. I love McLean. Um, unfortunately, Marte is now off our list here. Um, and then. I get, you know, steer is probably, you know, he gets you outfield eligibility and many, I don't know what they, and that's the other thing we always have to ask about how does each platform use eligibility? Cause I know in some platforms you only get one position, others you yeah. get multi-position. That's so, it. So DraftKings and uh, underdog are, are just outfield or just infield. So, okay. so steer is an infielder steers infield. Okay. So that yeah. kind of diminishes my uh, interest in him then quite but a bit. That, that makes him an affordable piece because he's in the infield, you know, his, his right. ADP is one twenty eight. Yeah, and it's ironic that the outfielders, I mean, Friedel, Benson, Fraley, I mean, they're useful, but like, and in fact, Friedel's going to bat leadoff probably, but batting order wise, or you know, playing time wise, it makes it tougher to yeah. roster too. So he, he's the part of that stack that doesn't make me feel great. You know, he's the leadoff guy. You should like that, but if he struggles at all, he's already kind of not he's marginal. The full yeah. slate of bats. So. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And another um, thing to, to mention is catcher in here because catchers are infielders by default. Right. Not many of them go early. Mm-hmm. You can get some quality catchers. Um, you know, J, JT Real Muto is his ADP is 228. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's your second to last pick or last pick. Um, he might be hitting fifth in the Phillies lineup. So, you know, if, if you get a couple of those top pieces, that's a really easy way to, to get a piece of that that lineup same thing with william Contreras mm-hmm. with, with the brewers if you end up with yelich you can grab him for you know not a a premium um and still get some pop out of that player hopefully yeah per, a wit and sal perez maybe also is another one that you could do because perez plays a ton of minutes ton of games i mean yeah. so you're going to get a lot of at bats than you wouldn't the other catcher so uh maybe that that, that the power plays i think with him Will, Will Smith as well. If you're working on a Dodger stack, he's going to be in the heart. He's a little more. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, he's he's not he's not a, a late round pick because he's he's known and he's probably hitting fourth. But yeah, exactly. 
Uh, let, let's uh, we'll move on to uh, other platforms, but first, and in fact, we'll move on to one that does offer a platform. That's Fantrax. Fantrax is the most customizable fantasy platform in the industry, offering the greatest fantasy experience for your dynasty keeper, redraft, and best ball leagues. Coming from another service, Fantrax makes it easy. Fantrax can import any of your current leagues and customize if needed. Fantrax offers the most in-depth player pool in the industry, including minor league players. Do you need a customizable commissioner service for your fantasy league? Fantrax offers more customization than any other platform. Waivers, categories, scoring system, schedule. Fantrax offers custom solutions for all that and more, and it's all free. Sign up for free today and be entered to win an official MLB signed jersey from Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Simply go to Fantrax.com slash Rotowire and sign up today. That's F-A-N-T-R-A-X dot com slash Rotowire. Fantrax, the home of fantasy sports. They're also the home of best ball leagues, and we are talking best ball. It's our best ball special today. I'm Jeff Erickson here with Mike Alexander from Rasball. Let's talk Fantrax leagues here. Yeah, Fantrax was one of the uh, the first folks to introduce low price point MLB best balls with their Trax 10 product. Um, they go all the way up to you know twenty five dollar leagues, one hundred dollar leagues. If you're looking to have a little bit more stake in the game, but when you want to volume some leagues, it's a really reliable product. Mm -hmm. Leagues build pretty quickly, you know, mostly in a day, and then they draft the following day. They start for the slow drafts. Um, they do have live drafts as well if you want to get it get that on your calendar. But it's it's usually pretty far out. So I'm just starting as one slow draft ends. I'm starting the next one. Um, right. They do have the classic roster uh, for each position, catcher, first base, second base, short base, uh, shortstop, third base, and then five outfielders, which are used to seeing with three utility spots. Okay. So you, you get the you know, full lineup then. Yeah, it's it's a lot of players. And, you know, you start looking in July and August at your, your teams to get a little bit of a sense how you did. And you're scraping the barrel for, for starters. Um, yeah. How many so rounds do these go usually? Uh, that's it's a 40 round draft in fact. okay so yeah um, big difference it's also then. not that deep of a draft for as many players as you're using um you know you, you usually see 42 or 50 in some other uh sites but um you know the the, the one thing you have to know on fan tracks is you don't get multi-position eligibility they're hard-coded as a shortstop um th that also makes it a challenge so you know you're having right. to back up each position at least one guy, you know, first base and third base, you're getting a lot of points because they have the power profile. So you want three, mm -hmm. um, you probably want nine outfielders. Uh, the spots you, you're, you're pretty much deciding on for me are typically catcher. I only want two catchers. Um, I don't want a third catcher because the points they're going to give you, it, it, you're not really getting much. You only start one, right? Yeah. You start one. Okay. So if you have a, a you want to get a pretty good one and then a solid backup and then forget the position. Um, and then usually like shortstop, I'm probably only wanting two shortstops as long as I got one of the elite players. Mm -hmm. Again, the pool dries up, you know, you're, you're, you need pitching the, the number of pitchers. Um, you know, you've got nine pitchers. You can use relievers cause they do reward saves, but you're really to, for a, a reliever to figure into your starting lineup. They need to have a multi-week save and and really like three saves um so you know uh, i'm not paying the premium where they are in the adp but as you get to the the middle tier some of them are worthwhile they, they might fill a spot if you get an injury um you're right but yeah you're you don't have enough starters across 12 teams to to have enough guys for everyone to have a solid staff so you got to stay after pitching early and often to make sure that you don't get left out in the goal that was my recollection that whenever I played a fan tracks best ball, it's like, I can never get enough starters. Just, there's just, there weren't, an, there weren't enough good ones out there. Yeah. And, you know, b being able to utilize the, the best ball scoring and lineup setting, um, I'm okay. Not having elite hitting. I'd much rather have some elite pitching. So mm -hmm. certain spots like first base and shortstop, you don't probably want to skimp out on, but like second base, I really don't prioritize. Um, I can get three guys that, hopefully are going to be enough of a hit to Frankenstein a starter for me there. Yeah. And that, that's just the point is you, I, you know, any of these deeper drafts, you're always going to have some sort of weakness. So it's, what are you most comfortable waiting on? What are you, and, and it might be, what do you, 
waiting i'm most comfortable finding a good guy late or maybe you're just like okay well they're none of them are all that great so i don't mind as much or something like that there's a couple of ways you can approach that there yeah you know you definitely need to work to have balance in any any of the best ball products even the real simple ones like like underdog and, and DraftKings. you know you, you don't want to end up with five outfielders one pitcher one infielder you're you're going to be playing from behind in those other two spots in the draft right yeah, it's going to be a hard time for you yeah I think it's so. I think when you play fan tracks too, it's probably important to know like those multi position guys, which position they're listed at, knowing yeah. that a little bit ahead of time there. Uh, because that can matter. Like Spencer Steer, like, oh, he's a three player position player. No, he's only one of them. Um, you know, uh, what's that? Uh, it really devalues uh, who, who am I thinking of? Uh, oh, God, uh, on the Angels, uh, with he has the four position eligibility, uh, yeah. Ren Hifo. Uh, you know, he's just a guy on fan tracks he's nothing special uh there because you only you only get one position on him yeah and that's you know there there's some adjustment in your in your adp you have to pay attention to you you're used to seeing those names maybe over on like the nfbc as a guy okay you know because of that multi-position he's sought after here he's just you know playing yep exactly that was, that was brandon drury last year on the angels you know he, he had everything <laughs> Yeah, so. everything and nothing at the same time. That that's yeah. the thing. Oh, right. and, and you can do uh, that. That's one of the things. Like, and we do have uh, a best ball cheat sheets out there, and we have it for the various sites, so that can help you out there. Look, that most a lot of sites do that. I'm sure Rasball does as well, um, where you can customize those rankings for the platform that you're playing on. Yeah, um, if you're a subscriber at Rasball, there's all kinds of tools for points leagues as well as Roto. So, yep. Uh, especially Rudy's war room. That's what I use to draft everything. You're, nice. You're, you're paying attention to your categories or your points hitting versus pitching. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so, and, and just to, just to plug our stuff real quick, you go to rotowire.com slash pod, check out uh, for a free trial. You can check out our best ball cheat sheets, have a uh, ranking separately for best ball tens, fan tracks, RT sports, underdog and DraftKings. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interest. It's a becoming an increasingly competitive universe. And we used to just do okay points. Well, that every every platform is different, and you know, account for positional scarcity. It matters quite a bit. We just talked about some of the variances there. Uh, before we move on to RT and talk about what makes them different, a uh, quick note from our friends on the Blue Wire Network. All right. Thank you for your indulgence and uh, checking that out. Those are listening in podcast form. Uh, we are talk. Let's talk about a little bit about RT and what makes them special. Yeah, RT is maybe not, uh, obviously not as well known as some of these bigger ones, but they have a really nice product. Um, I feel like RT Sports just has a core group of players that, that play fantasy sports over there and um, enjoy what they have. Uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to, to play there in, in the last few years. Nice. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a smaller draft. You're only drafting a 26-player roster. Um, so it's quick. Uh, the starting positions, there's no corner, there's no middle three outfielders and only one util spot, seven pitchers. So most of the same rules are applying. You know, you're, you got to pay attention to pitching, um, power and on base is big. The, the main thing you have to be careful with that setup is outfield uh, is much more abundant because there's only three spots. Okay. You know, you, you see these names, oh man, I'm, I'm used to getting that guy much earlier than I see him here. Let me take him. He's a value. All of a sudden you've got two of your three outfield spots plugged up, you know, through five rounds, you're, you're going to be passing on values later that, that you would have liked to have gotten. So, right. You, you want to fill your infield first with exception, you know, obviously the first round outfielders are still guys that are going to produce in an elite way. Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to stay after pitching, just, just keep drafting pitching. Cause even though it's seven instead of nine, um, you're you're using less hitters so right right um, and and the, the bench is only 10 players it's really shallow and i'm trying to split that 50 50 five pitchers five hitters um and that's not enough hitters to back up every spot so they do have multi-eligibility position here okay they so that's will, massive yeah yeah they will gain in season eligibility as well that's a that's a big distinction on a lot of sites um you know fantrax does not do that rt does nfbc does um, underdog DraftKings, they're hard, they're hard set. They're only an outfielder and infielder. That's not going to change. Right. But over here, you know, 
Um, like Mookie already has shortstop second base and outfield, but if he didn't, he'd get shortstop pretty quickly if he stays at shortstop. So it sounds like to me like the requirements are a little less stringent than if he's already got the uh, shortstop eligibility because I know yeah, he doesn't think, have it in twenty in games that require 15. twenty. Yeah, I, I think they're they're I think they're a fifteen. Um, that matters. Yeah, that matters too. That 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 can get you an extra position. Um, I think Steer might be second then, if I recall correctly, or maybe he's just short of fifteen also. But uh, point is, you know, you love those guys. You love to see it when you get guys at four yeah. spots. Like and Renhifo, I mentioned him earlier. I mean. He's second, he's third, he's short, he's outfield. If in that means in leagues where you have middles and corners, that covers that too. Now I know that R- RT does not have middles and corners, so you that it's a moot point there, but mm-hmm. it's good to know when you have that as a, as a possibility. Certainly. And especially outfield on, on this setup, you know, I'm I'm trying to get a first baseman, a second baseman, a shortstop and a third baseman as well mm-hmm. as a catcher. Right. Okay, that's that's five hitters. Where's my backup outfielder? <laughs> So yeah. I, I got to get a guy to play second outfield or first base outfield, and that's got to be my my first base and my outfielder. Um, Do you push Mookie up in the first round higher because of that? Give him an extra spot or two. His ADP is second overall. So um, yes, actually. in other words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want Mookie, you are. <laughs> yeah, I think I did Mookie in Raz Slam, uh, which similar uh, similar sort of me- mentality, and we'll get to that momentarily. Uh, but, uh, cause that is a, that is a best ball format as well. And it, on the NFBC platform, in fact, let's just start talking about that platform as well. Uh, so I'm doing Raz slam. I know in the past you've done some, a lot of work to help coordinating that. Um, I guess yeah. it might, I, I don't know too many people in my league this year. It, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. It grows a little every year. Um, you, we get a couple more fans, a couple more analysts that yep. maybe haven't come across before. Um, and you know, we, we fill more leagues than ever. So we, we are appreciative that we get to play over at the NFBC mm-hmm. uh, on their product. Cause it is a, it's a really nice product for full scale best ball. You know, you're, you're playing with middle and corner infield, five outfield, two catchers, two catchers. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's what you're used to playing in, in your big roto leagues. So it's one of the only places you can do that in a best ball setup. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got the first pick, uh, you know, right in the in the heart of uh, the Acuna drama. I just set it to auto and said it's, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, I'm either going to be sunk right away or it's it's Acuna with no doubt. So, right. Uh, but yeah, you're you're generally again with since you're not counting saves, you're discounting um, relievers, but you're trying to get solid starting pitching. Um, some of the NFBC leagues are smaller. You know, we use 12 teams for Raz Slam. Um, their um, cut line is 10, and I believe best ball is 10 teams as well. Uh, right. Best ball might be 12. I'm sorry. Mm, I'd have to check. But, yeah, you know, they're they're not quite the 15 teamers that the NFBC crowd may be used to from their draft champions. and other- Right. So I'm going extreme there. Uh, I'm do- it's it's pretty much the Uncle Ted strategy. Maybe even more extreme than Uncle Ted strategy. Uh, if you look at my draft board, I have this sea of hitters. I in the I went one pitcher in the first 17 rounds, and now I'm going like sea of yellow after that. Where I although I did get my third catcher, um, and I'm just going to pound pitching the rest of the way, pretty much. I think that's the way to go in Raz Slam, um, especially you know if you're just trying to compete for the the title. I like to get an ace or two. Mm-hmm. But really, it's pretty affordable pitching generally in the 10 and 12 team settings. So um, just just pile it on later. Uh, Yancey Eaton is, is in our league, and he didn't draft a pitcher until round 21. Oh, that's beautiful. That's and then amazing. he went pitchers until almost the end. <laughs> that's that's amazing. And there's 42 rounds. So, you know, yeah. you're, I'm going to still have like 18 pitchers, maybe more. Um, maybe I'll have 20 pitchers, uh, but I, I took one Grayson Rodriguez in the six. I just wanted to have a Grayson Rodriguez share yeah. actually, to be honest there, but I got, I got, I satisfied some of my Wyatt Langford FOMO there, got Jackson Churio in there too. Had a little bit of fun with that, but for the most part, I was looking, I, I, I did prioritize multi-position players. I did prioritize, uh, so getting some, uh, you know, you know, like I got Mookie at 1.3, uh, but like I wanted to have those, I wanted to get that third catcher early on early ish enough and then i'm just going to forget it i'm not going to get any more i'm just going to get a ton of pitching it's mostly starters i do have munoz in there i do but i'm going to try to just bully the pitching i'm just going to i mean bully the hitting and just volume the pitching 
Yeah, and, and that is certainly a strategy that has played out to win. So, yeah. Um, I, I think I think priori- prioritizing pitching there can be a mistake. And it, it can be easy because you might get a shot at, at pocket aces because people are passing on them. And all of a sudden you realize, wait, there's still pitchers in the third and fourth that I'm happy with and the fifth and sixth I'm happy with. And, right. That's right. Uh, Strider went 2.2. So nobody took Strider in the first round even in this one there. Yeah. So the kind of league was kind of on it a little bit there but anyways we're only in the 25th round it's going to be a while before we're done we're, oh, we're wow. a pokey league um Jeff, I, can i never be in any of your industry leagues because you're always <laughs> i've been drawing like I, we're in the last round of yogurt right now um and and that's actually accelerated in the last day at least to try to fi- finish the drill but it is tough i've had some faster uh tgfbi and Raslam leagues in, in the past but i got i got the double pokey special this year yeah and I, yeah, good, I, I, I can't I can't handle uh, crawling slow I drafts. I, I can't either. I'm not wired for it there. So what I do is I load up the queue and I set it on auto for one or two rounds and then yeah. check back like eight hours later. And that, you know, that seems to satisfy that, especially when you're trying to have a cohesive stack, things like that. You know, you're every time you log into the league, you kind of have to refresh yourself. OK, who do I have here? Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a multiple a, a multitude of slow drafts going like me, you're you might have to refresh yourself. Okay, this is the fan tracks league I'm in. Here's right. my stack. Here's the underdog slow draft I'm in. Here's my stacks. You know. Um, so when does best ball season start for you? I'm a little later than most folks. I don't like to jump in. You know, people are jumping in as early as like Thanksgiving these days. Um, I like to wait till the new year. Get a little bit more information. Get a little bit more of the signings out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I might dabble here and there before that, but. I really don't kick off until the new year starts. Okay. And, uh, you know, th- this year I, I, I got sidelined with bronchitis for a couple of weeks. So oh, no. I had, yeah. Um, it just was kind of a zombie and, and let everything stop and then had to restart where I was, uh, on different platforms. But, um, I'm actually enjoying playing a little bit of a higher volume this late in the season because we have so much information. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, rotations a little better, you know, injuries much better. Yeah, the, the the problem and I, there was a I got a tweet like a question the other day with all these injuries happening this week. Why would you ever draft early? It's because you could get Wyatt Langford at pick one fifty instead of pick right. ninety. Now, yeah, no, you know no. things like that in the eighties. You know, it, it's but for for every every person you get it that, that was that value. Somebody in your league also might have had that that value as well. So it's. It, there's there's trade offs and everything there. I, let's face I, it, I just enjoy the draft process unless yeah. it crawls. In it, 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 it really gets you set up for your your important drafts, whether that's your home league or a big money league. Yep, um, it, it gets you tuned up for for where you want to draft people. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'll, I'll cop though. I mean, it, I did an early DC where I was one of the slower ones because it was still during football season. I was distracted a lot there, and yeah. there's there's that also. So you got to know your own availability is there is another thing there. Um, do you is there like a like do you start one platform sooner than another uh is, is i usually there... start out on fan tracks that's it's a it's a simplistic one um okay. there's no overall contest you're you're just going to win your league uh i play a lot of the it's not a true 50 50 because sixth place takes ten dollars home in a ten dollar mm-hmm. league so you're you're breaking even um but you're doubling up first through fifth i just like to have a lot of volume there for, for ten dollars it's not a big price point you can just go league after league. Um, I'm realistic about how good I am, and I'm good at finishing fourth. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all you need. I'll, I'll play. I'll play in a top five league. You know, I, I can. I can finish fourth because I've got solid skill on the format and roster construction, and it's pretty easy for me to, you know, barring major injury issues, get that top five finish. Yeah, it but, is. Yeah, I, I still like to chase the big overalls as well. Sure. Naturally there. And I mean, that's the thing is like, you, you may draft differently if you're in a 50, 50, than you are in an overall contest though. That's for sure. Yeah. And, and then, you know, uh, as we get closer, um, you dip your toes in at the NFBC. Um, I'll kind of move from platform to platform, you know, get, get a little bit of NFBC in, move over to RT sports, uh, start underdog DraftKings. You kind of, depending on where you're looking to be and what contest you, you do kind of have to keep one of those, going at all times if you're hoping to volume mm-hmm. you're you know you're, you're facing people that are going to max out 
you know, they're, right. they're gonna, they're gonna, whatever the max is, they're gonna hit that. So if you want to compete with them, you got to get volume, or you got to have very little volume. You know, have five or ten drafts, and just know you're having fun. You're not competing with those folks for the overall, probably. Yeah, it could be a huge time suck though if you're trying to get be volume on multiple platforms. I could, I think, I'd see that being a challenge. Yeah. I like fan tracks for slow drafts. I like underdog for live drafts. Um, you know, you're you're done quick. You can do a few in a night. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, you know, was didn't take very long at all. Yeah. That that appeals to me. That definitely appeals to me there. Um I yeah, this is I, and I always like that. So what is volume for you? Like, you know, say like underdog. Like how many do you think you'll have? Probably about fifty this year after coming down with bronchitis and and not being on that. Um yeah. You know, uh, fan tracks a little bit more because I was I was on it earlier. Okay. Uh, and then a handful at the other places. Um, DraftKings, we'll see. Uh, y- you know, their their four dollar product is still available um, on on Underdog right now. You're, you're just getting in the ten dollar league, so you got to make a price point decision there. They they usually have a five dollar, but it's filled because that's what happens on Underdog. They uh, they fill contests. Then they sometimes open up another one. You got to be aware of that. I know that it certainly yeah. happened in football where they had like six puppies. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, it's the mitten and the little mitten and the yeah. snowy mitten and the exactly. You know, so that's, be aware that's of that. Why we love underdog. You you know they're gonna they're gonna have a place to play. Yeah, and they're they are they they are the guys that started draft before that there when they were one of the first to actually even yeah. do some sort of best ball there. So they they, they know the platform it. that's for sure. When when it comes to being plugged into how people play. I think they're one of the best. Yeah, absolutely. They, they know their stuff. I, I, I uh, was listening to uh, their founder on a panel uh, at the FSGA conference and uh, impressed both him and the prize picks guy, both uh, seem yeah. really seem like they know what they're doing there. So it was kind of cool to hear, hear them and do all that. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to do this now. You got me excited, Mike. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of best ball this year. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to be a volume player, but at least I'll I'll dip my toe in a little it, bit. It's never too late, you know. Everybody says best ball is an early uh, early season thing to do. It, jump in right now. There's plenty of people who are just dusting off their rankings and getting ready for their home league, and uh, it, it'll keep expanding all the way to the season start. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's going to wrap up today's uh, best ball special. Uh, Mike, what do you got going on? Do you have anything uh, you can point people to? Yeah, over at uh, Raz Slam, I have the Knights of the Round Table. I have a couple guests each week, and we talk an ADP chunk, uh, okay. some of the interesting parts and strategy in that in that range. Um, so uh, you, you can see me there. Uh, Raz Slam just wrapped, so if you wanted to be in Raz Slam, you're too late. But there's always next year. We do open it up to fans if you're interested. Uh, watch out for that on Twitter between like myself or Gray's account at Razball and, and that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yep. And someday my draft will wrap. Not today. <laughs> uh, something, something, four hour clock. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's something. We, we need the chess clock. Yeah, we do. The chess clock would be awesome there. Um, so, yeah, someday. I'm, I'm sitting at round 25. Hi. Hi, guys. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's okay. We'll, 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 we'll wrap that puppy up at some point here soon. Before, Hopefully before our uh, opening day, domestic opening day. Yeah. Korea <laughs> might be in, in jeopardy. Yeah, you're not looking great for Korea. But... No, it's not looking great at all. Uh, question actually from the, the chat real quick before we sign off. Kevin asks, in a points league, uh, who should get taken after Mookie Soto Freeman? Um, do you have a strong preference? Just uh, I'm not sure which platform he's asking, but you know, both the, obviously those guys tally higher in a points league than when you don't need, necessarily need stolen bases. Who do you like next in that, after that? Uh, yeah, it really depends on the platform. Um, I'm going to assume it's not underdog or, or anything because you're including Freeman there. Right. Um, you know, it's a little, it's a little early, but I'm really into Harper this year. Oh, I, I am too. I am I too. Think he's he's going to really provide value. Um, so, you know, if you're at like 108, that's maybe too early, but if you're 110, 112, depending on, on how big your league is, you know, and in, in our, in my Tout Wars team, I picked the 114. My goal was to go Harper and then Jordan Alvarez. And I was able to do that in an OBP league. So I'm pretty happy with that start. Oh my goodness. Of course. Absolutely. That is nice. I like that a lot. Um, Kevin, thanks for the question there. That's going to wrap up today's podcast. A big thanks to everybody for chiming in in the forum. And of course, those who listen online in their podcasts, uh, appreciate that. Appreciate you, Mike, and, uh, appreciate fan tracks and rival fantasy as well for chiming in with us here and sponsoring us. 
We got uh, Todd and Clay t- on tomorrow's podcast. As always, thanks for listening to Red Wire.